What's up everyone? So this is the second episode for the coding series and in this episode we're going to be looking at basic time commands in autonomous and we're also going to be getting the get to work um, and be able to integrate it with our what we had done last time. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so the first thing we will need to do is to set up git. So last time we just created an account and we really didn't do much. So in order to actually use git and use it to the fullest, ex fullest extent, sorry, uh, what you want to do is you want to go here and say add, uh, sorry, not add local repository, you want to say new repository. Here you're going to write the uh, repository name, so I called mine coding tutorial. Uh, description and then here you're going to for this is what really matters this is the file path of where you want to do it so we had saved ours into sample robot so this is going to be the uh, I guess the location of our repository and as you can see here this is what happens this is where it is so um, one other thing that we will need to do is um, right here we're just going to once you create this it's just gonna say public repository cool and now it has been published and then you can just publish your branch and boom you should be good now there's only one other thing that we need to we need to touch on and that is here so you have to go here and go to options and what we're going to do with this is integrations we want to be able to integrate Visual Studio Code into our actual editor. And here I have VS Code, but this will not come up automatically. What you'll have to do is you'll have to go to Visual Studio Code and download it um, for your machine how you want it. Because first does not show it. So that's kind of just how uh, we would set up GitHub. But And now that we've set it up, we don't we really need to do it that much. We don't have to work with it. Once we're done, we can just push our changes. So the rest of our work we're going to be doing is going to be on uh, the uh, FRC VS Code. So I'm just going to put that up, and all right, perfect. So we already have um, we already have everything that we need. But so for right now, let's not worry about these commands. This this stuff over here. We just want to worry about robot.java. Robot.java is really the the brains of this whole robot and it has a lot this is where everything is called upon this is where everything is uh, run on so everything connects to the the robot.java and we'll go over um, just object-oriented programming we'll sh like go over the map right now but right now this is all you need to use and since we're gonna be using the autonomous uh, th this is all you need because we're just gonna go here and plug in into uh, autonomous so autonomous initial and then autonomous periodic so let's just start off with um, talking about what the autonomous actually actually does so what we're actually supposed to do in autonomous autonomous it's your robot has to do a predefined task in a certain amount of time so in the 2019-2020 season, your robot had three balls and it had to first cross the line and then shoot the three balls into the container. And what that meant was you would have to program, and you would not, in the autonomous, what makes it different is that you have to program the robot so it does it on its own. You cannot touch the robot, you cannot give it any uh, input in the autonomous. So it's completely pre-coded, which is a good thing if you can uh, do your coding well. So, let's go here, and let's get here, okay. So, we're gonna, for the autonomous initial, let's not do, let's delete all of this. Um, we are going to do it in the actual autonomous, so this is okay. And we have our autonomous periodic here. So, um, let's see. We have our commands here and our different things. So we have a subsystem, some static OIs. We don't really need to go over this. Just um, right for now, we don't have to touch it. So 
when the anonymous uh, autonomous is started this function is called right here autonomous init so when this and this is just at the beginning so autonomous init what you would do um, if you were let's say if you're trying to do a time based function is you need to first get the time that you started so let's just say double uh, start time is equal to and first gives you uh, a time based uh, like a timer with um, finding the like how much time has passed so timer dot get uh, FPGA timestamp this is gonna be very important and basically what this says here is it's the time after the robot has started um, that the code has been like that it's basically a time elapsed after the robot has started now of course we will not be defining it here we will need to create an instance variable that will be um, used throughout all uh, throughout all fu uh, functions and methods so so let's see double start time um, and then just we'll initialize it inside the initial so that's kind of what we use it for and we can just make it private for now or here yeah, let's just make it public public um, sometimes you don't know uh, with first and their I guess software how it would uh, mess some stuff up so we initialize the start time here and now we actually have to um, do something about it so here we have um, right here we have the robot in it the robot periodic the disabled in it sale periodic uh, autonomous in it and then autonomous periodic so here instead of what this does we'll get into this later but this checks for anything that needs to be done we won't be doing it here though we will be um, just we won't be creating an object oriented programming we will just be doing it straight in the robot.java so the periodic function after the initialized function is called the periodic function is called every point zero two seconds after that so we're not going to be using a lot of while loops because those go forever or those could take a lot of time it's going to be more if statements so uh, because it's just calling upon it every single every single time so let's go here and um, let's just talk about the overall structure so we're trying to find how much time has passed since the start time so the best way we can do this is say if uh, timer dot get FPGA timestamp uh, minus start time so right now we're saying if the current time minus the time that we started with and let's just say uh, is like less than three so this basically says this loop is running for three seconds so while the distance that this basically while the difference between your current time and the time you started with is less than three so now at this moment nothing will happen because the body of this if statement is blank and this is where uh, we will add some stuff so right now let's just have uh, let's make something that moves the robot so to move you will first need to create motors using the device IDs you created in the Phoenix tuner and in a Phoenix tuner we will go over that later but basically you set a motor ID and that's your mo that motor ID is put into the motors and it's used by those motors so that's how we call upon the motors here um, our motors are 0 1 2 3 or 21 sorry 20 21 22 23 so we're going to just do it like that and depending on how many motors you have we have four um, you would just initialize those variables so um, since it's going to be used by a lot of different things we're gonna say private static here and let's go here let's also do static for here as well uh, private or let's do public as well uh, public static public static and then you would just say motor type I'm gonna go back with the right API um, Victor okay so it's right here and we are trying okay so we're gonna say 
since we're using Victor SPX, we will say public static uh, Victor SPX, which is right here, and this is the um, this is the motor type that we have, and then let's just call it uh, Victor One. Normally, it would be best to kind of give the names of the robot, uh, the motors, based on how they were constructed, like top left, top right. But since I don't have a robot in front of me, I cannot do that right now. So Victor One, uh, and then you're just gonna say is equal to. So you're just creating a variable here, new uh, Victor SBX. And then here, your device number, you would give the ID number you had. So let's just say 20. And then we're going to copy and paste this four times. So this name is the code, the it's the ID that the code calls upon. And then this is the number that the two, you set with the tuner. Uh, so we'll just say 21, 22, 23, and then we'll just call it 1, 2, 3, and 4. So once we have this, we will now um, in the CTRE um, in the CTRE API, it says that in order to move your robot, you will have to say let's let's show you to see if we can actually do it. So let's say Victor one dot, and now it gives all of the the possible uh, things we can call upon it. So the one we want to call upon is dot set. Uh, sorry, set, and then we want to say control mode dot percent output, and this is just just to keep it like that, and then so that's how much is being exerted, and percent output it has to be between um, like like a hundred and zero, and and then we have um, it can also be negative a hundred or a hundred, but it has to be um, kind of in between that. And since this is actually going to be decimals, not uh, percent sign, because percent signs mess everything up, if we want to go forward, we would say one instead of just saying a hundred. Um, so you're just going to be, if it was like you're going forward at half speed, it would be 0 0.5. And as you can see here, they kind of touch upon that with the negative one uh, bracket, uh, comma one bracket. So let's say we want ours to go at half speed. Let's just have it like this. And we're just going to use the same, um, same call the same uh, function on all of the different motors that we have. So Victor two, Victor three, Victor four. Of course, sometimes based on how the motors were assembled, it can be backwards. So uh, make sure you test out these values to make sure that they're actually forward facing. Sometimes if your motor is facing the opposite way, then you'd have to make that negative zero point five. And um, yeah, so let's just apply this to a real life context. In the 2019 2020 FRC season, our robot uh, moved forward and dumped three balls into the lower port for the autonomous, and it was very consistent. Uh, so we had a very consistent code. It was very easy, very simple, and that's normally how you want your autonomous code to be. Uh, and after the robot moved forward, we made a servo. Uh, we made it move to a servo. So we made it go a certain distance, and then after that, we made it move a servo, which is kind of like a lever that brought the balls down. And so, let's just say, in this context, our robot moves forward for three seconds, and then after that, we will need to let down the servo. So, uh, let's just get started on that. And what we would do here is say another if statement, else if timer dot get FPGA timestamp minus start time is less than 10 because we want to have ample time um, to lower those balls. Sometimes the ball might get stuck and you might need to do something. So let's just call it 10 seconds and uh, just go with that. So basically from three seconds to 10 seconds, you want this servo to be um, down, it, to move down. So let's first create the servo, and we will do this here by going right here. Let's go back to the servo, and first we have to create our servo. So let's go here and say public static and um, servo, because that's a type of uh, that's a type of the variable that we want. And let's just call it servo one. 
uh, of course, we'll have a better name. We can call it uh, dispenser arm or something like that. But for now, like any name, uh, as long as your team agrees upon it, it works really. And then we're just gonna say is equal to new servo. And then here it's asking for the integer channel. So this is where it's plugged into the robot. And servo also has a, on their website they have something um, where you could find that as well, the channel as well. So let's just say we plugged it on channel zero. Um, we would just go here. And now we have to actually make the servo do something. So we go here and just say dispenser arm, which is our servo, dot. Uh, and we're trying to make it move. So let's see what we can do. Uh, none of these really have anything. So we have to, instead of getting something, we have to set something. And here, set angles. Saying angle is what we want. So we want set angle. We want it to set it to 90 degrees so that it uh, falls in a um, kind of from being totally uh, totally horizontal to total vertical and then um, yeah that's kind of what we have to do and this channel sorry I forgot to touch upon it but this is the channel that's plugged into the Robo Rio and just make sure that you are um, just looking at the Robo Rio and it should have the channel number on the on top of the Robo Rio, basically. So I just forgot to say about that, but that's something you need to talk about. Uh, that you need to just look at. And um, this, of course, with these 90 degrees, you're going to need to change it while you're actually, you might need to like test it and say, oh, okay, 80 degrees is better or 85 degrees is better. But for now, 90 degrees works fine. Um, and with this, you've implemented a basic autonomous code that has been proven to work really well in competition. I can't stress this enough. Make sure you test. You don't want your robot to look like this. Uh, Shari, could you like show the, the Beyblade one? Because that is an error that could have been easily fixed, uh, but you know, we just weren't able to test, so it was shown in uh, an arena in front of a hundred people. Sure, it got us famous, or I would say more than a hundred people, like a thousand people. It got us famous, but I you try to get famous for the right reason. Try to be famous for having a really good autonomous rather than your autonomous not working. So that's kind of uh, all I have for this for this uh, for today and this episode. And I'll make sure to see you guys in the next one.